Well, hello. Thank you for joining us this week. As always, I have my beautiful co-creator here, Sarah Elizabeth Hoffman. And we are going to be recapping. We're recapping the embodiment clear and then going into our next piece of um, integration, which we are both super excited about. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the embodiment clear with this embodiment workshop that we've been doing. It was sympathy was the emotional block. It was in the area of family love. Last week, we were integrating and speaking about um, sympathy and red flags. And now, oh, and also <laughs> the mind and body connection. But now we're going to be going deeper into the mind body connection and speaking more to somatics today, which this is so our jam. That's why I say we're so excited to be doing this. Yes. Oh my goodness. I have really, really loved journeying with this clear. Um, even the synchronicity that the clear was actually around sympathy and family love, given that it is the, the autonomic nervous system that we're working with as we are coming into the body. Um, and, you know, even the name sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system has that word sympathy in it. And so it sort of gives me the feeling and I actually did a little bit more research on this because after it popped into my head, I was like, hmm, wonder what that connection is. But it actually was named sympathetic and parasympathetic um, because it's almost as if the nervous system is sympathetic to our triggers and what we're responding to in the environment. So I just, I really loved how all of that fell into place. Mm -hmm. I really love it too. When we were talking about um, specifically today and what we'd be speaking on today, we were, you were bringing that up. It was like, bing, big light bulbs go off, right? Because in spiral, sympathetic means, or sympathy means not in resonance with. So if we're thinking about the emotion sympathy, it, it means resonance, resonance with, I resonance with. <laughs> what did I say? Not in resonance with. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's it. But that's what it's this. It's the frequency because I'm such a science nerd. So I love to go like, yes, this is the emotion. But then I also think about like the scientific terminology and how that works with like frequency and vibration and everything else. And so, um, of course, when it comes to our central nervous system, which is our processor, okay, our natural processor, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I'm excited to learn more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. Um, so something that I'd like to just touch upon really quickly as we are talking about somatics in the mind-body connection um, is just the root of where that word came from. So Somatics is actually the root of somatics is actually soma, which means of the body, um, whereas the mind is the psyche, which means of the mind. So just giving that basic general information just for just for funsies, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I love it because I'm one of those people that I do like to know the definition and the meaning. Okay, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. are we ready? Yeah, ready. Okay, let me share my screen. And you can tell me if you see this. Okay, do you see it? I can. Okay, so we are moving into the infographic. We're talking about embodiment and somatics. And so one of the first things that I'd like to share is, because um, I love to really get to the root of a word, uh, is what the the root of the word somatics is is actually soma, which means of the body, and we're talking about the body mind connection. So then, psyche is of the mind. So before we really dive into the information that's shared here, I'd like to share a quote by Peter Levine, who we're actually going to be learning a little bit of information um, about later on. Um, and the quote is, I love this quote, humans rarely die from trauma, but if we do not resolve it, our lives can be severely diminished by its effects. Um, and so we sort of have this, um, this picture of like the living dead, like walking around, really not sensing anything, feeling anything, just numb. 
I love this because look at all, look at what is popular in society right now and for years now, actually. And that is this, the living dead, right? And all the zombie movies that are coming out and zombie series and everything like that. Right. So I love this part about where it's actually talking about being more alive to be full of sense and sensory awareness is to be more alive. This is when you feel alive. And I think you and I have been talking about this quite a bit with our integration, how we've been Mm -hmm. saying, Oh my gosh, like our senses are so um, vibrant right now. Like the colors are vibrant. Our taste is vibrant. Everything about what we're experiencing now through our senses because of the embodiment clear is vibrant and when you are seeing and feeling and living things in a different way like this is what it is to feel alive so Mm -hmm. yeah that's where that's why I really love this um this journey with somatics that we're really starting to educate more on and just feel more into so what is somatics somatics is actually a term that was coined by Thomas Hanna in the 1970s, which encompasses several different branches that focus on the mind-body connection, so soma and psyche again, um, and it increases and prioritizes bodily sensation and awareness. So to be full of sense and sensory awareness, again, is to be more alive. Like We get to experience the world in the way that we were meant to when we are able to be in the body and exist in the body. Um, So a question that we ask is, how do we observe, identify, and respond to sensation? And so some of those different um, somatic practices and somatic therapies that are out there um, actually include exercises like breath work, massage, body work, um, movement and dance practices and grounding. Um, And in addition to that, there's also, you know, actual therapeutic branches that um, like EMDR is one of those. I think there's four main branches that um, are are actually practiced in a more clinical setting. Mm -hmm. But we can use these somatic practices Uh, in our own daily lives and in our practices as practitioners in order to help move energy. And what is energy? Again, energy is, uh, I'm sorry, (laughs) emotion. Emotion is actually energy in motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can actually feel that um, with breath work. I feel like um, Mm -hmm. any of us can actually, if you're not familiar with this, you can actually feel it in movement, in dance, I feel like is probably, probably the one of the best ways. And then but the breath work too. that's actually when you actually can feel that immediate emotions start to move through the body. So energy, yeah, emotions are energy and motion. And you can actually feel that when you're doing the breath work. So I encourage anybody here, to go and just Google or get on YouTube and just look up some breathwork practices because you can do it really quickly and you're going to feel what we're talking about. Yeah. And when we're doing breath work, what we're actually doing is activating the vagus nerve, which helps us to come into a place where our parasympathetic nervous system is activated. And that brings us to a state of calm, a state of rest and digest. So that's a whole nother topic for another day, (laughs) but um, yeah, it really, it doesn't even take more than just a a minute of really intentional breath work to help our nervous system begin to come back into a place of calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm excited to talk more about that at a later time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is somatic experiencing? Again, we're talking about uh, Peter Levine, and this is the the branch of somatics that he actually um, developed himself. Um, this this was some work that came out of his own research and his own observation of animals in the wild who were um, you know attacked by a predator, um, and he noticed that in in wildlife animals are able to tremor and shake 
and really purge that charged emotion really, really quickly and regulate their nervous system really, really quickly. But with humans, um, we, you know, we don't do that so easily because number one, we're not taught, you know, we aren't taught that these somatic practices exist. We aren't taught that there's ways that we can, in a healthy way, move emotions so that it doesn't remain stuck and that we don't continue to respond from that, from that place, from that place of trauma, trigger, um, whatever the case must, m- might be. Mm-hmm. Um, so somatic experience, experiencing is supportive in learning about the autonomic nervous system to discharge trapped energy. The two main branches are sympathetic and parasympathetic. So when we're in sympathetic, we're actually in a state of fight, flight, freeze. So unfortunately, what happens is I would say the majority of us actually exist in this state and our brains actually do a really good job of creating this chemical sort of um, like a chemical response, basically, that, you know, when we're when we're used to feeling regulated in a certain state, um, our bodies just continue to create that for us. So we have to learn to regulate in a way that brings us down to, you know, activating the parasympathetic nervous system so that we can come back to a state of regulation and and calm. Um, So somatic experiencing focuses on healing the impacts of trauma in the body. So where are those emotions stuck? Where are we not able to purge them? It helps us to move to, first of all, access those stuck emotions and then be able to move purge release. Uh, So for our purposes, we're going to be focusing on only one of the three components of what actually comprises somatic experiencing, and those are called the five body channels. And these are the five body channels that we experience all of life through. (laughs) I love this of actually saying, well, what is this, right? So many times we get questions from people saying, well, what is somatic? What, first of all, what are, what is somatics? And then what is somatics experiencing? So I love how you dove deep into um, the origination of this particular one right here. And this whole part about being how you said, I think most people live at their, in their sympathetic state. I mean, there have been so many studies now on how we are being overstimulated by Mm -hmm. all of our electronics and our devices and, and how, I mean, it's, it's being shown that our our attention span is what, like three seconds now, <laughs> like, like yeah. three seconds. we're constantly moving from the one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And that is what that feels like being in that sympathetic state and living at this level. And you don't about- notice because it's the norm. Yeah. Yeah. Our bodies are used to functioning at that, in that state. And it's really a state of survival. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's also why it's really, you know, we're, we're starting to see meditation actually become part of like the mainstream for a lot of Mm -hmm. people who are concentrating on focus and things like that. And it's hard for people in the beginning because they actually go into that sympathetic state. Like that's when they're aware of it. And it's hard for them to actually sit still or to be quiet or to not have sound this applies to the people who have a hard time falling asleep. Like they actually need noise. Like, so they'll fall asleep to the TV or they fall asleep to um, music or anything like that. And that's because we're so used to living in, in this high state of survival that mm-hmm. whenever, whenever it all that kind of falls away and it's just us, then a lot of these emotions that we're going to be talking about this energy and motion, these emotions start to rise. And then that's when we're aware of it. And then that's also sometimes when we want to disassociate. So if you want to learn more about disassociation, you can go back to the other videos where we talk more deeply about that. Um, But I wanted to bring that up here too, because sometimes people are like, I can't, like, I I just can't, like a lot of times that it's hard for people to even do this, but we're going to talk about this for the next few weeks on how to actually 
yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> and yes, you can get to a parasympathetic state. And we're going to um, help you do that, support you in that way. Yeah. Yeah, just coming back to a place where we are able to really be um, present and be, just be a state of being. Uh, I really love what you brought up around meditation because um, that is, for me, for for sure, has been um, imperative on my journey. It's what I started out with and I continue to come back and, you know, fall back on meditation over and over and over and over again. It has been life-changing for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so before we go into the conversation around the five body channels, we have to really define what is trauma. What does trauma look like? Uh, I know we all have, you know, our own definitions um, and our own experiences around what that looks like. But um, so trauma is a physical or emotional injury often linked to a disturbing experience and occurs when there is a breach to the energetic protective barrier of our bodies. Um, it can also occur after prolonged intensity. So when we're talking about prolonged intensity, this could be something like um, a chronic state of stress due to a really high stress job. Um, and then where we see it show up in our work the most is um, working with victims of domestic violence, people who have experienced abuse, um, in particular, long-term relationships or, you know, growing up childhood trauma. Um, it can also be accumulative over time. Um, so it's not actually, trauma is not actually about the event itself, but how the nervous system responds to an event. Um, and this definition in and of itself is so similar to what um, Gabor Mate, who is actually the trauma doctor, he's called the, the trauma doctor. Um, he says, um, actually trauma is from the Greek word for wound. Um, and that trauma is not what happens to you, but what happens inside of you. So our bodies are always coming back to that one experience, but we continue to react from the inside within our nervous system as if it's happening over and over and over again, because we haven't been able to learn the tools to move the energy. Mm -hmm. um, and so just an example of this would be the trauma response, such as triggers um, that send you into a state of fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Yeah, I'm really excited that we're even talking about trauma specifically here. We talked about it a lot um, in the past few months. And but so we won't really go into that too much. But trauma really is, I mean, it can be something that is we are like, oh yeah, this happened. This is what went on. People know exactly the moment, right? But with our work with as spiral practitioners and working with the people that we do, sometimes it is the second part, right? It occurs when there's a breach to the energetic barrier of our bodies, but it's um, after prolonged intensity. So this is where you can see when um, like there's the bully on the, on the playground that every time you've gone out as a child mm -hmm. and you've gone out to play during recess or something like that, you were met with this bully. Eventually you get worn down, worn down, worn down. The same thing happens in domestic violence and it or abusive or even unhealthy and toxic relationships of this prolonged intensity. And people always say, oh, I can't even like, why would you be with somebody like that? And it's like, well, they weren't like that in the beginning, right? It's a prolonged intensity. It's something that happens over long periods of time. And then that can create trauma. It can mm -hmm. also be something that you may not even think is trauma. It can be a flat tire and you got stranded on the side of the highway Mm -hmm. People wouldn't think that that's trauma, but that could have been very traumatizing for somebody else. So right. it is all very much, um, you, it's defined by the person and their experience, right? That's, that's actually what it is. So I love right. that you brought up, um, Gabor Mate too, because he came into my life when I had friends who are in, um, actually a couple of behavioral health hospitals in different states. 
they were asking me if I had seen his documentary, The Wisdom of Trauma. And I hadn't, Mm -hmm. and it blew their mind. And these are people that work with, they have been in this industry. I mean, this is their career. This is what they do every single day. This is, these are the types of, um, you know, they're in behavioral health. They're in it. (laughs) They're Mm -hmm. in it every single day. They live it, they breathe it, all the things. And when Gabor Mate's documentary, The Wisdom of Trauma came in to their life, it just blew their minds on how it's not the event itself, but how the nervous system responds to the event. And what was that quote again? Would you do mind reading it? Yeah. Okay. So one of his uh, really popular quotes is um, trauma is the invisible force that shapes our lives. It shapes the way we live, the way we love and the way we make sense of the world. It is the root of our deepest wounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, and he has shown, he has so much research and has shown that even back to um, our infant stages, and this mm-hmm. is something too, that's crazy. Like as we're conditioned as a society, we're conditioned how to be mothers. And I remember, I mean, something as little as um, when I was a young mom, at that time, it was, you let your babies cry. Like you let your babies cry so they can learn how to soothe themselves. Mm-hmm. But he has shown that sometimes that's where trauma has been experienced. And whenever right. we're living from this, the deepest wound, that root, that actually is shaping our lives. That's actually how we are experiencing our lives. That's how we are developing and nurturing relationships. It's how we're, it's how we're reacting to life. And so with the work that we do, it's, shifting reaction into response, which some of the first steps of that is, is this right here. And that's why we're getting focused on embodiment and somatics particularly. Yeah, it really does shape everything about the way that we show up in the world, just like you're sharing as far as how we share up, show up in relationships. How are we showing up in business? How are we showing up with our children? It literally impacts every single aspect of our lives. Mm-hmm. how are we showing up for ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too, right? Just in yeah. general, how are we showing up? Right. Okay, so we're just going to briefly go into what the what the five somatic body channels are because that's going to be coming in our future episodes. I'm really excited to share. Um, we're going to go more into depth um, around a couple of these channels. So if you have any that you're in particularly interested in, please feel free to comment and let us know if there's one you'd like to learn about. But the first one is the mind. Um, And so the mind is basically, again, it's the psyche, it's the ego. uh, And the ego really loves to show up to protect us. um, But it's not always in the best way. Uh, It can show up for us in ways that are protecting us, but that may not be in our best interest. (laughs) We'll put it that way. Um, And so the next one is actually imagination. Um, And so the imagination is all of our imagined senses. So anything that we can imagine as far as we're feeling. Um, Then the next one that we're going to touch upon is posture which communicates between the conscious and the unconscious mind. Um, And so that's where we sort of like get to start to lean a little bit more into the feminine, the feminine aspect of, of these five body channels. Um, The next one is sensation, which is the inner felt energetic sensation. So we're talking about, does it feel hot? Does it feel cold? Can we feel our heartbeat? Um, You know, there's so many different ways of tingling. There's a lot of different ways to describe that. Um, and then the last one being actual emotions, uh, which is the combination of sensations and experience that is put into a word. So we're talking, do I feel angry? Do I feel sad? Uh, do I feel numb? Um, just any, any of those words that can express an emotion. I'm excited to dive into each and every one of these. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. The practices that go with them are so good. They are so good. So the mind, um, one of the things that, that if you, if 
I like to give these examples. One of the things that it can look like is like, yeah, our mind, our mental mind is really good at its job. I mean, its whole Mm -hmm. job is to protect us. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the mind is like, Hey, I'm going to protect you in every single way. So that's when, um, when you're saying like, it can be good. It's it's like, yeah, it can protect you and go, Hey, don't go down that. Don't jump off that cliff. You got to make sure it's, it's safe first. There's no rocks at the bottom or whatever. Right. You can't jump, go cliff jumping there. But when it's something that's may not be in your best interest, then it's something mm-hmm. like, hey, I really want to go an adventure in Costa Rica, but I have a fear of flying. And, and the fear gets in the way of, you can't go on a plane. Like, what's going to happen? And then that's when it's like, that's the block, right? That's the block. Right. So I had to go into like exercises around that. Imagination is amazing because I actually had a huge block around imagination. Um I was somebody that didn't know how to dream. I didn't know how to use my imagination. And this is where our creativity is and where we actually create our life. Mm -hmm. And the posture, this is, this was so significant in my healing journey was posture channels, because you can literally see how somebody is standing, um, the way their feet are placed, uh, all kinds of things, the way their arms are, um, all kinds of things. So I'm excited to go into that because you can actually kind of check yourself and go, okay, cool. Like, your body is telling you a lot of things all the time. And then mm-hmm. the sensations, I mean, this is just like, we've been talking about this, right? The sensations of everything, our senses and how we feel. But this is when people can say, I feel numb. Like they don't have sensations, period. And they don't right. have like the sense of smell and different things like that because they're totally blocked off. And then emotions, of course emotions. I think we all are probably most familiar with the emotions channel. And, um, this is exciting too. Whenever we start to discover what does joy feel like? What does love feel like along with sadness and excitement? Sometimes anxiety actually is misunderstood and it's actually really excitement, but we've been conditioned to think it's, it's anxiety and I'm nervous and I'm scared and da da da. But if you really look at it and you're like, Oh wait, actually this is excitement. And I'm, I'm and joy and just different things like that. So I'm excited to go into these practices. It's going to be. Yeah. Good. Another thing too, just to mention, as far as anxiety is concerned is anxiety can also be so like, that's an indicator that we need to move the energy that needs to be in motion. Mm-hmm. So um, for me, if I'm starting to feel anxiety, I immediately, especially if it's pressure in the chest or, you know, um, in the stomach area, then I immediately know that something needs to be done in order to move that energy. I need to move my body. I need to, um, you know, meditate. I need to dance, do one of these practices, engage in one of these practices uh, in order to, so that that can be relieved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this whole like access to digest and purge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is why Pete, they say it's so important to exercise. This is why they have PE and physical fitness in schools. It's so that the kids can get this, their, this emotion, the energy in motion and release it, release it out of their bodies. So then they can actually be embodied and be focused and, and learn and, and just be open, right? Yeah. And actually that's not nearly enough. I mean, none of us, I won't say none of us, but I would say that um, a large amount of the population really does is limited in, in their capacity to be able to just because of work and life, generally speaking, it's not always a priority. And so we end up not being able to move a lot of the energy that could so easily be moved. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So just, just going into, um, you know, what exactly do the five, the five somatic body channels words today (laughs) much (laughs) say their primary function is to access, digest and purge as we were just speaking about the stuck survival energy in the nervous system and continually process that charge or information. Um, There's so like, we can do this so easily once we just learn how to utilize the tools, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And our awareness is always within these five channels and are actually how we experience the world. Yeah. 
I love that in our practices, as far as just being spiral practitioners are concerned, when we're working with people, we're able to access these, these five body channels and actually be able to help to move and process the stuck emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this actually, I mean, I know that we, um, we have the focus on abuse, working with abuse survivors, but this, when this right here is so important, this topic, this, what we're talking about is so important because trauma is how we live. Like that's how we show up. So it's going to show up in your workplace. It's going to show up in your relationships and different things. And so whenever- It's going to be projected. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. But whenever we're starting to feel these emotions, like let's say you're in a workplace, you're going through some things at home or in your relationship or parenting or whatever it is. Um, and then you're in a workplace. And this is why workplaces also have breaks and lunches and things like that. So if you have an opportunity to- that you get up and you move your body and you go into a different environment, into a different state, because you are more productive as a human being. You're more, um, you show up differently, you show up more present, all of that. And I know that a lot of people work remotely from home or they may not, or things are optional, but this is, this is why like take advantage of these things. And then when we start to move into our practices and actually showing you a little bit more on breath work and things like that. This is when you can actually take these opportunities to go and implement these practices yeah. and you're going to show up differently in your life. You're mm -hmm. going to be able to start to move those emotions, that energy that is moving around in your body. And you're going to start to, this is why you can literally, I mean, people, people talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I've used it a lot, but even when you feel anxiety, you feel something, anything, right. And you can't like, you have to go into a meeting or whatever it is, or you just got off the phone, got in an argument with, with someone who you might be in a relationship with or co-parenting with or something like that. You can literally go into a bathroom stall and you can do that whole like shake thing shake. and get it all out, jump around and be all crazy in the stall and then you come out a completely different person because you just reenacted what Peter Levine had experienced. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're exactly. Really, yeah. We're just really excited to bring this to you. Yes. So looking forward to our next, our next episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was there anything else that you wanted to speak on around this? No, I feel complete. Okay. okay. All right. So if you enjoyed this, I would just ask you to share, like, like just share it with somebody that you think might also need this in their life or might be um, experiencing some of the things that we spoke about. Um, like we feel like this would really help people to even start to open up their minds and even go down their own Google searches or whatever it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, if you liked it, please like it and comment. We would love to hear your thoughts. And also, um, just huge gratitude for sharing this time yeah. with us again, mm -hmm. <laughs> huge gratitude. And then if you're interested in diving deeper, we have a link below where you can join our membership, where we go deeper into all of these concepts every single week. Um, and you are able to interact with us, interact with us in a personal way. So um, just sending you so much love and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> And if you're today, it doesn't matter.